Are we ready? We're ready. <laughs> well, we'll just, we'll just start. We'll just start straight away. So, hello, welcome back to Go Again Gaming, and welcome to the Azalea Cult Live here at Worlds in San Jose. We're currently in uh, Jim's hotel room, but it looks pretty good. The angle's quite nice here. Looks like we're in a boy band or something. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. And there are uh, hipsters in the other room. Yeah, The absolutely. Beach Boys. The Beach Boys. Mm. Um, and uh, we're joined today by Justin Soapy. Is that how you say yes, your name? Yes, sir. Yep. Excellent. And uh, have you had a good weekend, first of all? I spent more money than I wanted to. On Azalea <laughs> stuff? <laughs> On Azalea stuff, so... <laughs> what have you got so far, then? I uh, picked up uh, another cold foil skull bone cross wrap. Ooh. As I got mine graded a 9.5. Nice. That's awesome. What's the point five? On the corners, you said or something? Wasn't it's it? corners, yep. I got oh. a corner that had a tag on it that when they put it in, it made a white mark. Oh, outrageous. But that's still a cool little pickup. I would gladly be <laughs> happy with a 9.5. Nice. Excellent. Um, and Justin, if you want to give us a bit of background for all the viewers out there that you know might not know who you are or what have you, what is your achievements with our favorite Supreme Leader? I won a skirmish with Azalea. Fantastic. Um, the final match was the hardest of them all, and it was versus a Kasai. That was the hardest match, Kasai. Yeah, hands down the hardest match I've yeah. had. Yeah, makes sense. Just yeah, that's a really, really tough blitz game at the moment. Yeah. But what was your what was your meta like? Um, in regards to We had we actually had a very diverse meta. We mm. had a data doll. Nice. A Azalea being me. Mm -hmm. There was another Azalea there. There was a Shiana. There was a um, Dory, there was a Bolton, oh, wow. a Kasai, and then I'm drawing a blank on who the eighth person was. It's pretty awesome, actually. A lot of the heroes you don't see. No. Often, no. at least. Um, it wasn't a Kano. I'm trying to think on who it was. I don't remember off the top of my head. Yeah, but that's a nice diverse one. It's not like the standard, like Briar, Icelander, and Noldum. And Only the meta heroes, yeah. basically. Yeah, yeah. Nice we're cool we're the group that doesn't play strictly meta heroes. We like to all just play build a heroes, deck that yeah. has fun. Yep. I yeah. think. Oh, the last one was Sift Valda. Oh, okay. Uh -huh. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah. Exclusively quite good in UPF as well. The Sift Valda. Um, but yeah. No. I just wanted to uh, to bring you on to discuss the uh, recent spoilers for uh, Dynasty. Um, it started off with the bow that obviously I spoiled on Go Again Gaming. So you probably mm -hmm. would have all seen that at this point. Uh, and that's the Sand Scar Great Bow. We'll munch, uh, munch in it. We'll, we'll probably eat it if you like. Uh, we'll, <laughs> we'll mention what it does because obviously it, it sort of attributes into a lot of the cards uh, that we're going to speak about today. So that's once per turn action. You pay one. Look at the top card of your deck. You may put an arrow card from your hand or the top of your deck uh, face up into your arsenal and go again. And then whenever an arrow is put a uh, face up in arsenal uh, from your deck, put an aim counter on it. Um, so that can work with either this bow, it can work with Azalea's ability to get aim counters, and obviously uh, up until this point, we haven't really discovered what aim counters do, or at least you know the last video that we put up, we didn't know what they did. But now we know. Absolutely. Now we know. Um, so uh, we're going to go through some of those cards um, today. So the first, uh, well, speaking of equipment and weapons and all that sort of thing, we're, first thing we got, we got a new arms piece, not the trap gloves we were looking for. <laughs> Uh, but Hornet's Sting, do you want to read this And not a chest piece, and not legs, and not anything else. No. <laughs> All right. I would have one of you read it. I can't read it from here. Do you want to read it, Jim? Yeah, yeah. sure, I can read it. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. we're, I'm yeah. blind as a bat. We play Azalea, it doesn't mean we're good at seeing things. <laughs> we'll get this. Uh, so it's the Hornet Sting. Whenever Hornet Sting uh, defends, reveal the top card of your deck. Uh, if it's an arrow, deal one damage to mm -hmm. the attacking hero or ally. Otherwise, put it on the bottom of your deck, and it does have Blade Break. Mm. So it's the first set of arms that actually defends for us Correct. as Azalea players, but the ability dealing one damage is like a trap almost. But but it doesn't have arcane barrier. No, it doesn't have arcane barrier. Yeah. So that's a good thing about Ranger at the moment, especially with Azalea, is that you have AB2 on your equipment all of the time, basically. Whereas, you know, you take this out, you're dealing one damage to a You're hero running the same equipment against yeah. every hero, essentially. Pretty yeah. much, yeah. So, I don't know why you would use this, um, unless you want to be blocking physical stuff more, but just the one is just not not that much, is it, really? And you can uh, kill, can kill our, our allies as well, so if you if a Ashwing is attacking you, you can kill that with the one damage, but that's just an Ashwing. Right, <laughs> right. So, um, so yeah, we'll move on from that one. 
But it's nice to have more options. This is what the expansion sets are all about, just giving you extra things that you can play with. It might be broken, who knows? <laughs> well, <laughs> well, 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 well yeah, yeah. it will break after you block. Yeah, <laughs> I kind of wanted to take that seriously, but I couldn't, sorry. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, Heatseeker. Heatseeker. Um, so I'll read this one. And yes, this is a Majestic. This is the this is the one that's been sp spoken about the most as being the good one, potentially. Um, so it's one cost for five, blocks for three. This is the sort of red Ranger Arrow stat block, as we normally uh, expect. Um, and it says, when this hits, at the beginning of your end phase, put the top card of your deck face up into your arsenal. So obviously that will gain an aim counter if you're using the bow. Yep. And obviously it will be uh, it will be revealed information to your opponent, but it could be what could it be? It could be a trap, it could be anything. <laughs> a now, buff for next turn. A buff for next turn. Yeah. Yeah. He's thinking about it in a logical way. I'm not. I'm thinking of traps, Jack. <laughs> <laughs> you really want to use those traps. Yeah, I do. Uh, but yeah, so this is um, essentially it's like a sort it's like a um, Endless arrow, in a way, because if it hits, they you then get an, you're getting card advantage, aren't you? It would be degree. like pathing helix. Pathing helix yeah. says when it hits, you put a card into your arsenal mm -hmm. from your hand. Yeah. So it's just pathing helix, except for five damage for one instead of zero for four, and it pulls it from the top of your deck instead of your hand. Yeah, so you're arsenal. not. Yeah, so you don't need a card in your hand for it for it to be fulfilled, which is quite nice. Um, it's also one of the only newer cards that doesn't depend on a name counter. Yeah. Yes. That's right. Yeah, a lot of them, as we'll come to expect in a minute, are they do care about the encounters. Um, but yeah, this is a nice way to essentially keep retaining that five card hand. If you want to keep retaining that 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 five card hand uh, card advantage, if they've got four cards, you can continuously have that five card if they let this hit, which I think is quite nice. Um, but yeah, next one is. Immobilizing shot. We had some. Uh, <laughs> I call this one the scorpion. I was about to say uh, it looks card. like scorpion. Yeah. From Get Kombat. over here! Get over here. <laughs> and it's funny as well because we, this reminds me of. Um, I think a lot of, of the members in the last design and arrow competition designed something like this immobilizing shot or something along the lines of the Get Over Here style. Arc. Yeah, it was a tethered arrow essentially. <laughs> yeah, there yeah. Was some of that. Yeah, it was like an arrow on a on a line sort yeah. of thing. You want me to read this one? Yeah, yeah. Go for All it. right. So yeah, zero cost for four. Uh, so another typical red uh, ranger setup there. Um, mm. If a mobilizing shot has an aim counter, so it mm. does depend on aim counters, mm -hmm. uh, it has, when this hits a hero, they can't play more than one attack action card and one non-attack action card during their next action phase. It's kind of a poor man's red in the ledger. Mm, but for zero cost. For zero, exactly. Yeah, zero, blocks for three, attacks for four. What do you think about that? Do you think that's good? It's... Okay, mm. uh, it still requires an aim counter. I'm not the oh, of course. fan of yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, of course, yeah. And another thing too, it doesn't stop warriors that went to just attack reaction. Yeah, yeah. All it says is a card and a non-attack. Mm. So weapon attacks are perfectly fine, and you can play as many attack reactions on them, and it does not affect it. That's true. Yeah. That's, that's same with red in the ledger. Mm. People can do the same thing. That's right. And remorseless because it cares about ta uh, action cards. Yep. So I guess, yeah, the, a lot of our on hit effects or stuff like this will not care about warriors, like you say. So, but this could screw up a, a few things if we get the aim counter on it, but it's just jumping through that hoop. Um, but we'll see. Situational, situational. It exactly. is a rune blade killer. Yeah, a rune blade killer for sure. Um, this next one is, is pretty cool. Again, it, it alludes to the aim counters, uh, but it's called Dead Eye. So this, this is a, a yellow card for um, cost one to play, majestic. Blocks for three, a yellow block three, nice. And it says your next arrow attack this turn gains plus three. So it's just straight up buff for one. But if it has an aim counter, it gains when this hits a hero, look at their hand and choose a card, they discard it, and then he obviously has go again to so it's a buff. So if it has an aim counter, you can choose a card and discard that card if it hits. Well, against certain classes, that could be advantageous. Yeah. Yeah, I do like it. I like I like discard effects. Obviously, Poison the Tips is another one, which is a yellow card that discards cards but hasn't really seen much use, I don't think. I love the card. You do? Oh, yes. yeah. It's got a free reload. Mm. It's a yellow, so it pitches the Death Dealer and to shoot your arrow. Mm. That's yeah. fair. On top of it's a blanket, your arrows this turn. So you can play that first. You can play, you can like Bullseye's Bracers down a Bolton Shot. Mm -hmm. uh, get it going again. Uh, get arrow. it going yeah. again. Reload, reload. it. Yeah. Fire another arrow, yep. and if you haven't used the bow yet, you could use the bow as well. Yep. And now that's, you have that's fair. three mm. arrows that on hit, they discard a card on top of everything else that they do. Mm. Okay. So now how do you feel about Deadeye? <laughs> it costs one. 
Yeah. Mm. That's very rough. Um, because a lot of lists, you run more yellows than blues. Uh, like my list alone, I run, I think, maybe six blues. Um, the blues aren't as efficient in sure. Azalea, I think, as the yellows are. Because the yellows pays for your bow and shoots your arrow. Yeah, yeah. The blue kind of has you the one extra to do things, like against Just Icelander. Fizzles. Yeah, yeah, pay for it. But yeah, frost. it doesn't help you against all the other matchups that say, I want perfectly tuned to damage across the board. This is what I have to pitch. Mm. We make it happen. Mm -hmm. Okay. Nice. Cool. Uh, then we got... Uh, the next are the uh, rares now, I believe. Rares and commons, yeah. So these are, these are three ofs. So we won't read each one out, but we'll read one out of each one. Sure. Um, read the red out, because we'll, that's what we're probably going to run. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> so uh, this one's called Drill Shot. Uh, this is another zero cost arrow attack. Blocks for three. This is a four. So in the yellow and blue, it'll be three and two, respectively. Um, so if it has a name counter, it has piercing one. I would have would liked to see more piercing effects. Yeah, piercing's pretty cool. It is cool, and it's you know getting through the arrow, getting through the arm. Just armor. thematically, like I mean, they, maybe yeah. not mechanically, but thematically, I yeah, think it's just a cool idea. So piercing one, just to just to rectify that. So if it's defended by an equipment, it gets plus one. So if you defend with an iron rot, for instance, it gets it bumps it up to five. But it says when this hits a hero, they put a minus one counter on an equipment they control. Um, so um, yeah, just a way of whittling down people's equipment. It actually, you know, I'm thinking about it a little bit more. If you get one of these dominated, uh, they're more likely to block with equipment, and then you yeah. could, you know, up that plus one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What do we think? Um, I and think ignoring the aim counter. We know it I honestly <laughs> think that's probably one of the best arrows they've released, because oh, really? it has okay. a stagnant on hit that targets Guardian, our hardest matchup. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It says, your fridge is not as effective. Get yeah. that fridge out of here, mm. because that minus one counter lasts all game. When you put it on ramparts... Yeah. They can't do anything to get rid of it. So even if they pay one, the Rampart still blocks for zero. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Because Rampart doesn't destroy. It just it gets one, two, or three based on how many times you block and pitch with No, you're right. Yeah. It just turns it off to where it says, well, that's a useless item now. Yeah. No, yeah. didn't and even it, think of uh, that angle. I like yeah. it. And also, I, it says if it hits, you pick a, a armor, right? Mm -hmm. Right. It's not even one that's on the chain. Right. You can hit somebody with it, and destroy their tunic. Oh, right, yeah. And any equipment they they control. So yeah, yeah. Yep. right. And you yeah. just laugh at them as you destroy their tunic because they let it hit. <laughs> you're, you're really selling this arrow to me, actually. Yeah. yeah. This is this is the best arrow I've seen out of the entire set so far. Sweet. Uh, All right. Just because it's so good to get strip all the armor. Now, how do you feel about the other colors since they are not going to get over uh, the three block as easily? Um, if you play Minoism Belittle, the yellows are useful because they are three. Okay. Because um, then you can reveal it to belittle, mm -hmm. search your minnowism, play your minnowism if you wanted, and then shoot your arrow. Yeah. And Pumped it all it. counts. Yeah. Yep. Wow. Okay. Now, that's very niche and not a good deck idea, but it's a mindset <laughs> to think about with some of the cards. Okay. That's fair. Sweet. So, yeah. Let's move to the next set here. Uh, so, this is a uh, part of a cycle for all of the classes, I believe. And this is the Blessing of um, Cycle. Series, yeah. Uh, so I think a lot of the characters have this. Um, so, um, do you want me this one? Uh, yeah, sure. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, we got a one cost, three block, and it's an aura. Uh, so the whole blessing thing. Mm. Um, at the start of your turn, destroy blessing of focus, then opt three. This mm -hmm. is for the red. Yeah. Uh, and so reveal two and one. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and reveal the top card of your deck. If it's an arrow, put it face up into your arsenal with a name counter. So mm. another way to get a name counter on without the bow. Mm -hmm. So that's a plus. Yeah. Uh, just in the subtext, uh, look at the top three cards of your deck. You may put them on the top and or bottom in any order. I guess it's explaining opt. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. But this, is, this seems like a big like setup sort of card, doesn't it? Looking, it, for, the top, looking for the top three and then getting a name count. Uh, if you opt three, you're going to hit an arrow. You are, I mean, yeah. you're better with Azalea. Uh, if yeah. you don't, then you might have a poorly tuned deck. And then you get the yeah. <laughs> very yeah. poor. Or a bad shuffle for that. Yeah. So what, yeah. This is, what this is saying is what you must do with this this trigger on the stack is use Azalea's ability to get an aim counter and a dominate. This is what that, that's, that, that's what this is saying you must do in order for it to be very good, I guess, isn't it? Uh, you don't get to Azalea, I do believe, once it because it just puts it into your arsenal already. So when oh, you can't right, get okay. dominated... Um, Oh, only... okay, that's not even a maid. It just says, if it's an arrow, put it face up. Oh, yep. so you can't. That's a shame. Yep, so you can't dominate at all. Um, the main downside for Thank me... Thank God you're here. It costs one. 
Um, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think it would have been better numbers for Azalea if it was a zero cost, mm. but instead it's an op two, one, or no opt with the blue. Mm -hmm. um, because it still, it still does three the, as well. And it still does the same thing of it just, you want to get to opt before, it just flips the top card, you look at it, and if it is the arrow, then you put it there. I think it would have been better if it was, like I said, zero cost, and like the blues didn't opt. So you just said, next turn I'm going to put the top card of my deck onto into my arsenal if it's an arrow. Okay, yeah. I think that would be better. Mm. Um, but beggars can't be choosers. Uh, Azalea love is Azalea love. Exactly, um, yeah. We're in, the, we're in the pits for a reason, aren't we? Exactly. You know, we have to make use of the garbage that we're given. <laughs> That's a one way That's to exactly put it. it. I mean, yeah. <laughs> um, this next one, this next one's been getting uh, a bit of attention though, because obviously the on hit effect is quite lovely. Uh, and this is hemorrhage bore. So I'll read this one out. This one is. Uh, one cost, this is a common as well, so it can be played in the um, jankier, commoner format, clash and all that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. um, so one cost, uh, blocks for three, and it's five, four, or three attack, depending on the pitch value. And it says if it has a name counter on it, it has, when it hits, destroy a card in their arsenal. So like a mini CNC effect yeah. on, an ar on, a, on an arrow at common rarity. I think it's quite nice. The nice thing with that arrow is if you run it with Dreadbore, it is practically a CNC. Yeah. Because can't they can't the... use the D reacts. Yeah, absolutely. Um, You'll have to have another way to get the aim counter on it, though. Maybe the, the aura or something. The aura would yeah. be a good way. Um, mm. I think it would be better if that card didn't rely on the aim counter to do it. Sure. Mm. Um, but <laughs> I got to say real quick though, the art on this one is oh, amazing. Oh, yeah. It's yes. brutal. It is Love brutal. it. Another good thing as well on the art as well. You'll be able to see this on the episode here. But in the background as well, looks like Blackjack's Tavern, and looks like the. Mm -hmm. uh, we are in the pits. We are literally in the pits yeah. there. So, um, somebody has wronged our queen, and that she has just threaded him right through the arm, uh, the hand, the arm, and the mouth, and the skull right just, out of his head. Boom! <laughs> Love it. Praise be. Yeah, praise be our supreme leader. Um, next, we have uh, Long Shot. Um, so, do you want to read this one out, Jim? Yeah, sure. Uh, this is a, a brief one here. It's yeah. going to be a zero cost. So there's your zero cost. <laughs> uh, for three, uh, two, and one, depending on the other pitches. Mm -hmm. uh, if long shot has a name counter, it has plus two. So it's basically just straight up buff. Yeah. So it's a good So it's got your zero cost, but it's still got a name counter. You, hey. so you're just kind of happy. <laughs> uh, um, headshot. Even though headshot cost one, it has an easier time getting its buff. Get its plus one. Versus yeah. long shot requires a little bit more thought to get your buff. Mm -hmm. um, unless you're playing this bow. Yeah. But I think what will be interesting is when we see like this card, the blessing, all tied in with like some of her existing kit um, to help her opt to get through to find like the blessings is at the right time. Oh, uh, yeah, to okay. Buff, to buff Opt for your blessings, right basically. Yep. Yeah. Because normally we try to opt for the arrow, but I feel like with the new blessing, it would be more of a, we're going to opt for our blessing that lets us dig the deepest possible. Because it's kind of like, I'm going to pay one, next turn I'll get to search three. Mm. I think that's a pretty good plan. It's just, it's going to take a lot of setup and changes from the current list that a lot of people run. Yeah, no, I, I think all of these cards are really going to take, a lot. if you want to play them, you're going to have to have very different lists. Except the mm. one that says it doesn't need an aim counter to do something. Yeah, the one, <laughs> the one. Yeah, yeah, the Heat Seeker, whatever it's called, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, but yeah, I think these are, I, I was going to say, I think they're a quite a good rate for what you get, a zero for f potentially five, as long as you're yeah, getting the aim counter. Free block. Yeah. Free block, yeah, I think it's good if you are using that other bow. Um, so yeah, I think the rates on them are quite good, but... Um, but yeah, you have to be running that bow, as we said. Uh, and then we got the the last set um, of cards here, and that is point uh, point the tip. Uh, yep. James, you want to read this one out? Yeah, sure. So uh, we have a zero cost again. Uh, it's an action. Target face up arrow in your arsenal gains plus three uh, until the end of turn. Put a aim counter on it. So here we go. That Another card, card is to give my you card. Aim counters. Mm. Okay. That card would be the card that I think, since it is a zero cost, it does exactly what it wants. It's on par with Take Aim, mm. it's on par with Read the Glide Path, and it's got a really good effect for if you're running those counter decks. Yeah. Um, yeah, so you probably want to you, you probably want to use, what, all three of these pitches if you're running the cards with the aim counters on them? Or I would if say... If you're not using uh, the, reds the and new yellows. bow. Yeah. I would say reds and yellows would reds and yellows. be the best ones. Um, your yellows you can still pitch, the reds you'd pretty much play immediately. 
Um, but I think overall, they are probably the best card that, and then you can run the Majestic Arrows with yeah. those. Um, there is what, three or four Majestics? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I was just checking them, but I think yeah, as you as you said, this is the only this is the only card that then puts encounters right. instead of the bow. Of course, this is the only card that then puts encounters on existing arrows that we have, or the ones that actually care about it. So you can still use dread or still use death, death dealer. dealer. Yep. So um, and so, yeah. I think we can all agree it's definitely making up for silver to the tip. Oh god, yeah. <laughs> What's what that? do you mean? But it's one of the best cards. <laughs> yeah. uh, <clears throat> let's not silver it. Let's point it instead. Right. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's pretty much all we've all we've got for the new cards. Um, so it's, it's good to see that you know in these expansion sets or supplementary sets, whatever you want to call them, expanding on the heroes that we all we all know and love, especially with new ways to play said heroes as well, is always a nice little thing to to delve into. I think, isn't it? So. Absolutely, and the, and if nothing else, the art is such a step up in the whole set, but it, for Ranger in particular, pure gore. Yep. Yeah. Absolutely. It's what we like in the pits. Absolutely. Yeah. And um, in regards to this as well, we did have um, we did have confirmation from James White himself saying about Azalea's journey and her development as a character, and he said that with this bow, with this sort of suite of stuff that she's got, this is part one of two steps to her development. So I don't know what that means. I mean, he said something in the Q&A as well about uh, Coldfoil Azalea. Yes. Uh, during the Q&A, uh, got to ask when we're going to finally get a Coldfoil Young Azalea. Mm. And he confirmed it's Season 6 Skirmish. So right after the PQs that come in the first part of January. And guess what comes out around that time, too? The new set. The new set. Mm. Uh, with the Assassin, with that hint, with all of that. Cult, I think we're going to the pits in the next set. I think so. I feel really good about it. Yeah. It's going to be interesting to see what happens. Um, but yeah, part one of two of her journey. Interesting to see what's going to happen next. Uh, I hope that she doesn't get... Well, I don't know about you, but I, don't, I hope that she doesn't get the Starvo treatment where she suddenly gets a talent and we have to play the new Azalea rather than the old one and all this sort of thing. I, mm. I really hope they don't give her the Starvo treatment. Mm. Um, I don't think anybody from the pits is ever going to be A tier. You know, we gotta yeah. we got to work for it. Yeah, exactly. We have to take our losses as well. We have mm. to like the pain and the suffering that we go through to get the big trees through the other end. Um, that's just who we are. But Thank you very much for tuning in to another episode of the Azalea Cult. Thank you very much, Justin, for coming on as well. Thank you for having me. That's right, no worries. It was a pleasure to meet you this weekend as well. Thank you very yes, much, sir. Been waiting to meet you guys. Yeah, it's been good. It's really cool that we all got to see each other in person too. So my first time getting to see Az in person as well. So the events have just been yeah. amazing just from that angle, being able to meet everybody in the flesh and blood. Yeah, absolutely. And the common language of playing great games, baby, even if they are in the pits. <laughs> <laughs> Praise me! Praise me! <laughs> <laughs> You gotta keep the faith, I'm telling you mate, next yeah. year Azalea is gonna be the business. Oh yeah, absolutely.